Hi guys, I have a word for you guys. It's really important. Um, think about the time when you were going through something. You thought that you wouldn't make it. You thought you wouldn't make it. And you made it. Think about a time when you begged God to help you and to save you from it. And you made it. God helped you and saved you from it. Think about the times where you thought you were going to get through something and you were stressing. And you couldn't believe you were going through that rough patch of your life. And you were stressed out. You, were, you couldn't even sleep because you are so stressed out. And you didn't know how you were going to get through that situation. And you got through it. You're still here. The point of me saying this is we have to be appreciative of life despite what we're going through. We need to be appreciative. I understand like warfare is heavy, warfare is rough. You know, and it's easier said than done. But I'm going through certain things too, right? And I'm taking my own advice as well because this is humbling me too. This is humbling me too. But... We have to be appreciative of life itself, despite what we're going through. Because best believe, if God did not want us to be here, he would have already taken us. If God did not want us to be here, a lot of the stuff that have been done to us would have succeeded. It would have prospered. Whatever they're trying to do would have prospered. It would have happened. But the fact that it didn't meant that there's a reason why God still kept us here. You see what I mean? Even if we're frustrated with life, even if we're like, man, I don't want to be going through this. There's a reason why God still kept us here. Because he could have just took us. Or he could have allowed whatever plots and schemes were going on to happen. You know? Do you know how many bad things could have happened to you that you don't even know about that you have no idea about because you didn't see it but God saw it ahead of time and protected you and there may have even been an obstacle to protect you from a worse obstacle but we may have complained about that obstacle not realizing that obstacle protected us from a worse bigger obstacle that may have probably even made us perish right do you know how many people are in a hospital today that have pastors coming to the hospital to pray for them in hopes that they can survive whatever they're going through so they can watch their children grow up or so they can see their grandkids grow up or so they can heal from whatever is going on in their body so they can have kids, get married, be happy one day. You know what I mean? Do you know how much people are like, man, I'm fighting this obstacle in the hospital or I'm fighting this sickness and I wish I had the battle that you have because you're still able to breathe. You're still able to sleep. You're still able to eat. You're still able to receive instructions from God. Or you're still able to see another day. And any day now I could be taken because there's a time, timing on my sickness. Do you see what I mean? You could be like, man, God, I don't want to be here no more. I'm tired of warfare. I'm tired of my life. I don't want to be here no more. And there's someone in the hospital praying for life. Begging God for life. You see that? The other day, I was complaining to God about something. I was complaining to God about something. And I was laying down. I was about to fall asleep. And I was complaining about something. I don't want to say what it is. <laughs> it was so petty. 
And right when I complained, I was about to fall asleep and he showed me a vision of this family in Africa that were sitting down on dirt and they didn't have a home. And when he showed me that vision, my heart sunk. And I, my, my, I felt my face frown, even though my eyes were closed, I could feel my emotions physically, but my heart sunk and I apologized. I'm like, God, I'm humbled. I'm humbled, God, I'm humbled. I'm humbled. I'm humbled. When I went through my for those that don't know, I went through a serious spiritual warfare attack in 2016 that almost took my life. And I had an encounter with the Reaper spirit. So I saw the Reaper in my home, my, my unit, my apartment. The next day after I saw it, everything went downhill. Everything. The warfare was so bad it left me on the floor peeing on myself. While I was peeing on myself and I couldn't get up because the spirit and a spirit entered my body, I was looking in the mirror because I had this closet mirror with glass. I didn't tell nobody this. I don't think I told anybody this. I had this closet mirror that was, you know the long closet mirrors that are glass? And I looked in that closet mirror as I was laying on the ground in my pee shaking, trembling because when they do heavy witchcraft when the witchcraft fully comes through you start trembling, it's like you went in an ice bucket that's when it fully afflicts you what we feel right now, a lot of us it's not the full affliction it's just symptoms when the full affliction hits you, your body's going to be trembling like you went into an ice bucket you can't even walk literally, you can't even walk and you pee yourself. Why? Because of the anxiety makes you pee. It's so bad you pee yourself. It's so bad you poop. Literally. But as I laid in my pee, I looked in the closet mirror, the glass closet mirror. And I looked in my eyes. And in my pupils, my pupils were like a TV screen. So in my right eye, I was seeing all my flaws and I was seeing not only my sins, but I was also seeing the sins of my kingdom husband and that pupil. And it was like I was watching a TV screen. When I looked in my left eye, I saw my future. And everything that God has planned for me. Not everything, but he showed me some clips in the left eye of the things that he has in store for me. And while I stood there, tears fell down my face. Not stood there, while, while I laid there, tears were falling down my face. And this is a true story. Y'all don't have to believe me. God is my witness. If you don't believe me, just pray and ask. Ask God to reveal it to you. If it's meant to be revealed to you. Well, I just revealed it. But, you know, you got what I'm saying. So, the left eye, I saw what, what God has in store for me. And when I was finally able to stand up, a lot of things played out, which I don't want to go into right now. But my life was saved. The spirit was trying to get me to jump the balcony. But I got falsely arrested that night. And I got locked up in a jail cell. Had I not been locked up in that jail cell, I wouldn't be here. There was a time in 2015, in that same building, I was crossing the street. It was a red light. And there was a bunch of people downtown crossing the street. I remember telling myself, oh, you have an appointment at this time. You got to hurry up. You need to run. Run quickly into the store and run out. I was about to run in the store. But for some reason, it's like my body didn't, I didn't run. 
I was about to run, but my body didn't run. It's like I didn't run. I felt the nudge to run. I wanted to run, but I couldn't. I couldn't run. So I didn't. I just walked across the street with everybody else. However, I was ahead. Thank you. I was ahead of a lot of people when I was walking. I was ahead of a lot of people. Do you know a, a car came flying through the red light and missed me? Like, I can't even explain how close it was. It flew past the red light. Flew. It was almost like it was a setup. Like the person was directly trying to hit me. It flew past the red light. And I was so close. It flew past the red light. Literally, my sweater or whatever I was wearing, it, was, it like shook. Like literally. Imagine I would have ran. I would have got hit. It, I would not have made it because the way how that car was flying when I looked around to see if anybody else saw that nobody else saw that everybody else was just trying to get to their destiny I'm like how did nobody see that how because literally when the car flew it was like it literally it was a setup for sure I know it was a setup because the, the witch that was attacking me in the condo at that time used to watch me as well she, I know she paid someone to do that there was another time I was at school. This was in 2017. I was at school. And it was lunch break. Are you going to go or are you going to let me go? Thank you. So this was lunch break. I had my headphones in. I was blasting music. I didn't hear the ambulance coming. I crossed the street. And the ambulance was flying. And the ambulance literally just missed me. The guy in the ambulance was like this. This year, God told me stop eating fish around like last year. He said stop eating fish. So I stopped eating fish. There's a restaurant close to me that makes the best bomb stew fish. This year, just recently, the restaurant got shot up. Cause I used to always go there for fish. And even though I didn't go, I don't go there, I don't eat fish like that anymore. Maybe once in a while. I used to go there still for like a little bit of like snacks here and our jerk chicken or whatever. And I just saw that I got shot up. The other day, I spilled something on myself and I avoided a car accident. I'm telling y'all. Thinking about all of this just humbles me. So whenever you start fighting that spirit that makes you want to just say, forget life, forget this, forget that. I don't want to be here. Da -da -da -da, despite what you're going through. Think about a time when you went through similar experiences and you got through it also think about the amount of people who may have once said that they didn't want to be here who are now fighting for their life when i was fighting that witchcraft in 2016 i begged god to save my life i begged him to save my life i went from not appreciating my life being s not wanting to be here to begging god to save my life Okay, so I just wanted to share that with y'all. Whenever those thoughts come in your head or, or those words come out your mouth, just remember all that, okay? I love you guys. Bye.